We all know that early experiences are absolutely key for our children's future development. Here in Barking and Dagenham, we're really fortunate to have an amazing team of childminders and a support team that look at what's available for you and what's the best match with your child and your needs. Our childminders have become a truly professional team. They work with the childcare support team to develop skills across the provision of play and learning. That means that your child will have fantastic opportunities in a safe, protective environment. Nancy is very professional and she has a certificates and degree and the atmosphere is very friendly. For Taha, it's one home to another home. I have a daily report which is about what the child has eaten and I write about the activities we've done for the day. When I do that, so I give them samples of the activities that they can do with the child at home to enable the child to have that home and my home uh, activities going on. I've written everything here right. in the book for you, so at your own time, you All can right. have a look at it. Thank you very much, you are. Daily report is important to me because I can read it on my own time. So I'm really, really happy now. I do risk assessments every morning before the children come. I do inside and outside. All the toys are cleaned on a daily basis. There's locks on windows, kitchen. The children are here and the area's got to be safe. I know what to do when there is a fire. We do a fire drill as well. I have a fire blanket out in the, the kitchen. In an emergency, all parents' numbers are in my mobile. I've got all the children's uh, doctor's numbers, so that if I need to take any of the children to hospital, there isn't another child minder that I can contact to come round and sit with the children until parents come here. All child minders are Ofsted registered now. Ofsted are a government agency that regulate all early year settings. They come round, do a full inspection with us every two to four years the same way they would with a nursery setting. We do fire training, risk assessment, diversity training. They are good courses, they're enjoyable and they give you a little insight and help you along really. I've got the MVQ level three in children in the early years. I've also got counselling and psychotherapy level four. Every six months we do a review of progress so we would just go back over the profile from the last six months and see how the child has moved forward. Each child's development needs to be monitored so we can, we can pick up if things aren't developing as quickly as we feel that they should be. Yeah, and you just monitor it, make sure they're, they're doing all right, you know, you don't want them lagging behind really, you know, so you're building them up for the next part of their schooling. If there is a child in our care that maybe could do with some work, one of us can spend the time doing that work and we can track it in the profile. We chose a childminder for our children's childcare because of the flexibility that it gave us, but also because of the warmth of being in a family environment. We felt that we were able to negotiate with the childminder on important things for us, such as flexible hours, um, specific choices about food that we wanted our children to have and we were also able to talk to the childminder about emergencies and, and she was very flexible and very helpful. I've chose childminder over nursery because I know I get a one-to-one -one with Millie. Hey, hello. The advantage of one-to-one -one is I wanted that constant contact with Millie, like with Kelly I text her all the time, she sends me pictures. I'm just going to go through this form all about me. The all about me form is basically uh, background information about a child when they first come to my setting. Um, it covers information like uh, dietary requirements, allergies, uh, cultural requirements, likes, dislikes. When I'm hungry, I what does Millie do when she's hungry? She cries. Okay. It's really important that every parent feels one out for their child because each child is an individual. Uh, they all have different routines, needs. Morning! We're all going to go in and take our shoes off and our coats. Children yeah. normally arrive between oh, half seven and eight o'clock. I do work from like half seven till six o'clock, but obviously if a parent wants me Come to in. have them a little bit later, then I'm willing to sort of work till about half past six.
I've always had a really good relationship with parents. I want them to feel that they can come to me and talk about their child and then I can talk to them. On a daily basis in the morning, the children do come in with a pant lunch, but I do get days where parents are running late and not being able to make a pant lunch, so they will just give me a quick ring and I will prepare a meal or a pant lunch, whatever the parents would like their child to eat. When the parents do come to pick up their child at the end of a busy day, they can be rest assured that the child has been provided with a healthy meal throughout the morning, uh, afternoon and uh, tea time. So I do keep at the back of my mind the five fruit and veg that children need to have on a daily basis. I do discuss with the parents what the child has eaten throughout the day, so it is helping them to see what um, they can give them while they're at home. Well done. Shall we count them? When I pick Millie up every day, I sit here at least 20 minutes with Kelly and we chat. I just love hearing about her because being at work full time, I feel like I miss out loud. She makes me feel so easy. It's great. <laughs> Our childminders are experts in early education. That means they're highly skilled in making sure that your child is learning through play activities. They have fun playing with your children and before you know it, your children will have learned all sorts of new things without realising that they were learning at all. Swish, swish, swish. It's not just play, but they are learning through it and it's a first hand experience. For example, they should not be just building blocks. And whilst they are building the blocks, after building it, they will start, oh, how many blocks have we? Then they will start counting the blocks. And the blocks that they've used, it might have different colors in it. So through the play, they will learn the different colors as well. The toys and resources I have are literally displayed behind me, but they are rolled around every other week. Well, there's so many different activities. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, one that I do is called, uh, it's like a treasure basket. And in the treasure basket contains all sorts of plastic, softwood, rubber, ribbons, plastic boxes, cardboard boxes, just so they get a chance to feel different textures. We use uh, music in a variety of ways. We have instruments um, to be able to shake, move, hit, bang. Uh, I use CDs, which are like children's nursery rhymes, um, and also songs that the children like, songs that they pick. Outdoor play is very important for their children, for their physical development. Some children live in flats, and some children don't get the exercise they, they need. I've got a climbing frame, seesaw, slides, we have the sand pit out there, water pit. Over the years I've taken care of children with um, special educational needs. Not all children are able to communicate with the language, but with the sign language they're able, where I'm able to speak to them with speaking audibly and signing to them and showing them pictures of things that they might want. This is um, pictures of the food they have for snack time. Any food that they have, I've got the pictures there. So they're able to choose which one they want to have during snack time. And choosing, it's build the children's confidence as well. Isha's playing with the real fruit and veg, so Isha can get so much out of a real fruit by smelling it, touching it, feeling it. I don't make any of the decisions. What I'd get to do is to get the child to actually choose herself or what she would like to do. I go to a play group twice a week on a Tuesday and a Friday. Millie in particular has made a, a friend there and they see each other and they kind of greet each other, which is really nice. It's a good social time for them. You've just seen some lovely examples of our fantastic childminders and the children that they look after so successfully. The good news is that the government recognises how important these early years are and they provide free funding for 15 hours early education for all three and four year olds and for many two year olds as well. A two year old funding it's a free childcare service um, in most settings, child mining nurseries um, and everybody's entitled to it as long as you meet the right criteria. 
There are a lot of parents that can't access childcare because of finance and there are a lot of children that need to be in a, a setting where they're learning social skills. It's a good stepping stone for that transition to nursery. This is a great scheme for parents. They benefit, the child benefits, we benefit, so it works out well. If you would like more information about how to access our childminding team, you can call the Family Information Service on 0208 227 5395 or you can go online to www.lbbd.gov.uk